Welcome to Shreveport Connection with Tommy. This video is on your SmackDown live results and your spoilers for WWE main event. Only got one because uh, one result for that because of the fact that uh, there was only one posting on six different dirt sheets. We'll have you. Anyways, uh, you know, anybody like my t-shirt? Dad has guns. Let's see if I got more. All right, back to the video. Uh, birthdays. Call a uh, big cast turned 30 years old uh, on Tuesday, the 16th. Fritz von Eric, aka Jack Atkinson, was born August 16th, 1929. Died September 10th, 1997, of, of brain and lung cancer. <clears throat> Dick Murdoch was born August 16th, 1946. Died of a heart attack June 15th, 1996. Missing Link Dewey Robinson died on this on August 16th, 2007, at the age of 68, following a battle with a lung cancer. Happy birthday to Paige! Today I'm doing this video on Wednesday. She turned 24. And her birthday present, guess what? She gets suspended for 30 days. Well, this violation policy, along with Alberto Del Rio, who also got 30 days. First violation of the wellness policy. As uh, according to WWE on their website, and WWE has suspended uh, Jose Rodriguez, aka Alberto Del Rio, for 30 days, effective tomorrow, being Thursday, August the uh, 18th, for his first violation of the company's wellness policy. Also, Paige, hers is a uh, they suspended Soraya Jade Beavis, Beavis. Four thirty days effective tomorrow, August eighteenth. No word on what the poly, what violation test that they violated, but my suspicion just uh, uh, about probably about their domestic abuse last month when they were both arrested after an event. <sighs> what have you? Advertise dark uh, main event. From SmackDown was uh, advertised as John Cena, Dean Ambrose, and Roman Reigns versus Seth Rollins, Bray White, and AJ Styles. Okay, 2K17 changes are in effect. Ladder match overhaul according to this link at IGN.com. Changes so far in real, in real life. A ladder match means high impact, high altitude spots that get the crowd off their, off their seats. In wrestling games, ladder matches mean a lot of fussing over how to place your ladder properly. A lot of clunky looking interactions. No more. In 2K17, the ladder can only be set up in five specific locations. In front of each set of ropes. In the center of the ring. Just to get close to one, press the right button. And it gets set up properly every time. No more setting it up, climbing to the top. Only find you were an inch too far from the left, uh, too far to the left. On the top of that, you could set a ladder up as a bridge from the apron to the outside barrier, opening up lots of new opportunities. I personally uh, get arm dragged from the inside of the ring to the outside through a, through a ladder before I get to do anything more creative, but the possibilities are totally there. Chain wrestling and submissions change. All of all the neat new features we've seen from mukes and visual concepts over the last few years, chain wrestling and new submission system have been the two most contentious. They are not going anywhere this year. But some changes have been made to help address the co complaints some of the fan base has voiced. Chain wrestling is no longer automatically engaged at the start of a match. It will still happen if two characters try to grapple each other simultaneously. Or in other situations based on the wrestler's style and personality. But it is no longer the standard way to start a match. While I dig the chain wrestling system, it being the guaranteed match opener didn't make a lot of sense. So I'm glad it plays a similar role. As for the submission system, it's been tuned so that you're rotating pie wedges 
aren't so slippery. It definitely uh, feels like you have more control in submission situations as a result. That being said, some people still just want to ma mash buttons. And for them, an alternate submission system can be turned on that lets them go back to the days of the controller smashing and mashing. How that will work online with people wanting different styles is up in the air. But it's cool that 2K is giving everyone a chance to play they want to play. IGN posted this uh, video looking at backstage brawls in upcoming 2K video game. What are your thoughts on Becky Lynch playing the role of a lesbian character? Hmm. I've not heard of that, but I'm aware of WWE planning to book to booking anyone, including Becky Lynch, in a LGBT role at this time. Stephanie McMahon's comments last week about WWE integrating LGBT characters into their program. We have a lot of people asking about this, what would it look like, but I believe we've all come to the conclusion here at uh, where I got the news from, Wrestling News World, that Vince McMahon is too out of touch to do it. That's not to say they're not going to do it. However, the fear amongst the readers is introducing LGBT characters means playing to bad stereotypes. I think it could be effective if done correctly, but I also believe that's giving WWE creative too much credit. Darren Young, WWE's first openly gay performer, had this uh, reaction when someone said that they hoped WWE gave him a LGBT-related angle. At Darren Young, no days off, D. Young retweeted to Wayne Power. Back to Becky Lynch. I don't want to see WWE do anything that could make her a bad stereotype. How much confidence does it look like Darren Young has in WWE Creative? A measure of equality is central to uh, my being. However, I'm not sure WWE storylines are adequate way to portray that very important message. In fact, it could just uh, be the opposite. Will there be a trade in, with WWE and uh, with Raw and SmackDown? Involving Randy Orton to Raw or Kevin Owens or Cesaro to SmackDown? I've been told that there have been whispers within WWE about doing some trades between Raw and SmackDown. All three names you mentioned have come up. It would be it would seem foolish to move Orton right now, especially with the interpromotional angle with Brock Lesnar. Too close to SummerSlam to do it right now. Cesaro would, would have to be on SmackDown to begin, begin, begin with. That was the original plan. I do believe there is a feeling that he's he's miscast on Raw. As for Kevin Owens, I heard there have been some discussions about trading him, but nothing as, as to what direction it, it will go. With the new era and arrival of, of new talent, is there any panic or resentment from older guys or veterans who may feel that they are being eased out? A lot of veterans are, are being eased out. And whether there is panic and resentment or not, it's happening, and there's a that's a good thing. Nothing against Big Show or Mark Henry that they've uh, had lengthy careers and are now at the stage where it's time to step aside and let some of the younger guys come through. John Cena is adjusting to a, a more part-time talent, and it seems like the Dudley Boys are being utilized right now as extras to help the new generation of talent. But it's not just a new nudging out. The old spots are always at risk. Roman Reigns is, has lost his spot to Finn Balor. Everyone's spot is on the line. Even stars in the top of the card are at risk. Well, what do you think about TNA's uh, new president? And will it uh, improve TNA's ratings or anything? Well, from what he's done so far, keeping Dixie off, off TV, maybe. More confidence in Billy Corrigan than I do Dixie Carter, but it's uh, too, is it too late uh, for TNA? They have a chance to continue to be one of the top independent promotions around, but they aren't anywhere near they were from 2005 to 2014. Of course, the talent they had back then was why they had ratings. 
When TNA Impact got dropped by Spike TV, they lost over 50% of their audience and are now nowhere near being competitive to WWE. That doesn't mean that they can't have entertaining TV, nor does it mean that they don't have talented workers. It just means that TNA is more like Ring of Honor and less like WWE. My PYT, by a rapper and noted wrestling fan, Whale, has been announced as another SummerSlam theme song. Along with Flow Riders, who's with me, and Fort Miners, welcome. And despite winning his match against Randy Orton by disqualification, it's unclear whether he Slater is, is signed to SmackDown. Uh, he was welcomed back to the blue brand by SmackDown Commissioner, Shane McMahon and General Manager, Daniel Bryan, which led to a series of awkward events, as you can see right here on this link. This was what, 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 what happened on SmackDown. Following the broadcast, there was an in-ring segment between Dolph Ziggler dressed as Kentucky Fried Chicken founder Colonel Sanders and The Miz, who was dressed as a chicken suit in a chicken suit, which I'll post that at the end of the, well, at least a picture at the end of the, uh, of, towards the end of the video. Uh, thanks to at Raven Lope 31 I said that uh, Ziggler as Colonel Sanders and Miz as chicken was quite the entertaining event of the evening. Hashtag SmackDown Live. Hashtag Post Show. Following video right here is one of BWO's attempt to take over WWE Network. BWO's, if you don't remember ECW, Stevie Richards and the Blue Meanie are featured on in video in the video attempting to sneak into the building along with a cameo from Joey Styles, who is no longer with WWE. And again, posting that link for you. Uh, WB reportedly applied a trademark to Grand Metallic. So I guess he's actually got his WB deal, which is a clear sign that he has accepted full time contract offer. And here's a video of Kurt Hawkins' return on SmackDown in the near future, as it's a promo, which happened during SmackDown as well. WrestleMania Radio. Uh, Russell's own radio exclusive featuring Russell's own dailies, Nick Hossman interviewing former tag team champion Nasty Boys, Brian Nobbs. Starts the interview with Nick before Jerry Sag joined in. The interview short after on WWE's decision to infuse more cruiserweight wrestling into its product. As uh, Jerry Sag says, once you stick yourself in that cruiserweight or lightweight niche, when I see it uh, now, it's slowly turning one of the greatest wrestling companies into, into looking like an independent. Like a TNA or something like that. I think it's wrong. I think the way that they're doing things now is wrong. The, the style of wrestling should be part of a card, but not every freaking match. That's bullcrap. That's one of the big mistakes that they're making right now. Yeah, cruiserweights are a great thing. 150 pound guys that are that size or whatever, yeah. But they shouldn't be wearing the WWE title. That's a joke. They should barely be able to get around the Intercontinental title, the Intercontinental belt. Well, Brian Knob says, I take it like everything else. Everything changes. Nothing says stays the same. So if that's the way it's changing and the people are still get, getting with it, it looks like they are. That's the way to go. They still have some some big guys. Look at Cass with the buddy Enzo. He's my favorite. And Jerry comes back. Well, look at the ratings. Look at who was drawing. The house show, the gates. Look at the pay-per-views. Is it really working? Just wait and see when the Cruiserweights do show up. I'll throw that my part in there. Uh, the Nasty Boys appearance in conjunction with their upcoming appearance at Legends of Wrestling Night at Marlins Park in Miami, Florida on August 27th. Some topics also in, uh, highlights it, uh, included the origins of the pit, uh, pit, uh, pit, uh, pity city, pit stop, and what legends helped them come up with it. The upcoming Legends of Wrestling Night at Marlins Park in Miami on August 27th was announced. Jerry's memory of growing up with Brian and the backyard wrestling company he used to run. Their favorite memories from SummerSlam. WWE's decision to do less shows at classic venues like Madison Square Garden 
more big men in pro wrestling trying to act like cruiserweights. New Day as the tag team champions. WWE's decision to make Brock Lesnar exempt from the wellness policy. Why Kevin Owens would have fit in with the Nasty Boys. And more. Isle of the Dead at this link. Uh, starring uh, WWE superstar Maurice. And it's a trailer for that movie that she's uh, in uh, coming on Thursday night. Eva Marie was unable to debut against Naomi tonight, just like my prediction last week. Some type of excuse, making it three weeks in a row being stuck in traffic, as the they said on TV. On somewhat related note, Naomi debuted a remix theme song and a new entrance on tonight's SmackDown. You check it out at this link. Glow in the dark gear. Uh, no, that, uh, I watched the video, but I couldn't hear it. I think my speaker was turned off. Kay Wigan attended Raw event in Corpus Christi, Texas, and sent on, uh, sent on Monday night and sent the following report. Just to piggyback off Ernest DLG's report, crowd-wise, it was pretty vocal crowd by Corpus standards. As for the fan entering the ring, there was a huge gap between the barricade one on, uh, on one side, and he just ran straight through. The security was fighting him on the ramp throughout the uh, entire Finn Balor and Seth Rollins segment. The guy was yelling at kids before the show in front of the arena about God smiting them for being sinners. And he was obviously on some pretty he heavy stuff. It's a wonder he got into the arena in the first place. We also had another fight break out between security and an unruly family during the main event. And the family was ejected from the building. <clears throat> Go to this link for an update with Brooke Adams. Well, uh, with a, as she's 35 weeks in her pregnancy, not with Robbie, confirmation, on her Instagram page. And she quotes by saying, My life, my love, my best friend at West on Wayne, or West and Wayne. Today we are. Hashtag 35 weeks pregnant. And we couldn't feel any more blessed. Our lives have 100% changed. And things can be difficult preparing for a baby. But with every obstacle we have found, found fun in it. We laughed at our, at our mistakes eventually. With that comes newfound love and excitement for the most amazing thing that is about to happen to both of us. Hashtag proud. Hashtag excited. Hashtag scared. Hashtag ready. Hashtag pregnant and perfect. Hashtag love your bump. Hashtag Pregnant fashion, hashtag pregnancy, hashtag maternity, hashtag bun in the oven, hashtag bump and I, hashtag pregnant and fit, hashtag fit pregnancy, hashtag prego, hashtag mommy to be, hashtag it's a boy, hashtag bump fashion again, and hashtag love. Undertaker's wife, Michelle McCool, and their daughters were in the crowd at the SmackDown taping, a uh, live event. Uh, SmackDown Live TV as they live in the area and were sitting at ringside. I didn't see Michelle. Did Re uh, Renee Young uh, posted on Twitter said she's got a possible injury. Unknown, but uh, she did say on Twitter today at Renee Young, WWE, pretty sure I broke my ankle yesterday. More on the story as it develops. Smackdown pre-show at this link. Main event spoilers. Kane uh, defeated Ricky Starks. Baron Corbin defeated Rhino. And I think I got a picture of uh, Baron Corbin and Rhino. But Kane and, and Ricky. Sorry. My, my luck too. <sighs> Lately my luck ain't crap. Smackdown. Well, okay, a uh, SmackDown video from from a fan from WWE main event picture uh, on Twitter for you. SmackDown opened up with Shane McMahon and Daniel Bryan backstage talking about SummerSlam. Randy Orton appeared and Shane has a contract for him to sign to make Sunday's match against Brock Lesnar official. Somebody knocks on the door and in comes Heath Slater with a fruit basket. 
for the Blue Brand Bosses. He tosses an apple to Orton. The basket is addressed to Bob, addressed to Bob, but Slater says it was supposed to be Boss. Slater mentions standing toe to toe with Lesnar on Raw last night. Shane says that was impressive, but he dissed them last week. Orton bites into the apple and says he has an idea. We go to the SmackDown opening video. Video. Well, I'm already getting it. Well, Orton versus me, hey, Slater. Was my prediction and wait for the results. Uh, we're live from Austin, Texas. Maurice is in the in the ring with Intercontinental Champion The Miz for their Miz TV. She gives her husband with a grand introduction as the fans boo. Miz welcomes us, but is quickly interrupted by the music as WWE Champion Dean Ambrose makes his way out to a pop. <clears throat> I didn't get to see mo most of this segment. Uh, my feed wasn't coming in. Ambrose starts in about how he can't stand Mrs. Voice and Summer Sam. He's quickly interrupted by Dolph Ziggler making his way out. Ambrose and Ziggler have words and look ready to fight, but Miz gets in between them and reminds us this is his show and they are his guests. He's invited them to talk, not fight. They end up trading promos as Miz and Maurice watch from the corner. Ziggler lays Ambrose out with a super kick right in the middle of a, a fiery promo. Ziggler says Ambrose will see he is that damn good on Sunday. Ziggler walks off as his music hits. Well, as he was saying something, he was like bending down. And Ambrose was actually kind of like looking at him, uh, going down with him. And up comes a super kick. We go to Mauro Ronaldo, David Otonga, and JBL. Still to come segment. Uh, John Cena versus Ambrose Del Rio and Randy Orton versus Heath Slater, who has another shot at a contract. Up next, a 12-man tag team match. We go to the commercial. Usos, American Alpha, and the Hype Brothers versus Vault Villains, Ascension, and Brizango. And I uh, kind of knew that this match wasn't going to last very long. I think it lasted maybe three or four minutes. Back for the break, uh, Usos were out first, followed by Chad Gable and Jason Jordan. Zack Ryder and Mojo Raleigh were out to uh, uh, finish off their introductions. Bob Villains were out first for their team, followed by Ascension, Tyler Breeze, and Van Nagel were out last. Breeze and Gable got to start, start things early off. Victor tagged in, keeps control of Gable, talking trash and dropping him for a two count. Gable count counters and tags in Mojo. He takes out Victor's leg and nails him in the corner. Ryder tags in for a double team, but Connor makes a save. Everything falls apart, both teams will brawl inside the ring as we go to commercial. Back for the break, Usos clean house. More chaos with everything, everyone hitting their finishes. Usos hit double super kicks, and then one of them hits a big splash. The finish uh, sees American Al Alpha drop Aiden English on his head for the win. Like I said, the whole match may have took, even with a commercial break, I give the whole thing four minutes. After the match, Babyface tag team celebrate together in the ring. We got backstage between Dean and Ambrose, and he doesn't look happy, holding his chin. He faces Eric Rowan after the, after commercial break. Also, still to come, Eva Marie's spectacular debut. By the commercial. Next up, we got Naomi versus Eva Marie, supposedly. <coughs> Back for the break, and we see Eva Marie's wardrobe malfunction from, from last week. And we go to the ring, out comes Naomi with new entrance. She's glowing a bunch and dances before passing out. Gl uh, glowing swag, swag to the crowd. Eva Marie was out next as a voiceover gives her a grand introduction, sounding like Michael Buffer. The voice immediately announces that Eva is stuck in traffic and will be unable to compete. And she apologizes. Naomi uh, looks upset as JBL rants about how Eva should fire her driver. We get a look at some history between Cena and Del Rio. AJ Styles backstage with Del Rio talking to him. AJ is uh, going to have a front row seat to see Del Rio beat up John Cena tonight. Styles uh, goes on about how Del Rio put Cena out of action and Del Rio doesn't want to hear it. Del Rio says he's been beating up Cena for a long time and doesn't need AJ's pep talk. AJ points out how he's in the main event of SummerSlam and Alberto's not even on the card. Styles walks off. 
Still to come segment, Ambrose versus Rowan. Also, Orton versus Slater, match commercial. And that matchup, is, that matchup is next. Randy Orton versus Heath Slater. Back from the break, out comes Randy Orton to a pop first. Heath Slater was out next. Says he looks to win his SmackDown contract. Orton goes to work as soon as the bell hits, and he doesn't let up. Orton takes Slater to the corner and unloads on him with the right hands. Ruffy warns Orton, but he won't back off and gets his disqualification. Heck, he's doing all of his uh, stuff, and it's like they didn't even announce it until after they came back from commercial break. And even my mom was like, what the heck just happened? Who won? Well, so I had to explain to her. Well, you keep on doing what the referee tells you to break after a five count, you probably get disqualified. <clears throat> after the match, Orton tossed Slater to the, to the floor as a fan cheer. Then Orton uh, tossed Slater over the announce table into a tonga. Orton uh, keeps control and brings Slater in the ring. He mocks Brock Lesnar, uh, dropping Hank Slater with a German su suplex and bouncing around. Orton hits an RKO on Slater and ends up in the segment by standing tall. Actually, he, he gave uh, two suplexes to uh, to uh, Slater. He was teasing the third and just gave him the RKO. Wyatt family grab it, flashed, and Bray Wyatt announced that they're here. Back to their old. They went and blowing out the candle. Well, he just said, we're here. Back for the break, Slater is receiving medical attention in the back. Shane and Brian walk in with a contract. Slater is thankful and mentions showing no mercy. Brian says no mercy is a good name for their upcoming pay-per-view and thanks, Slater. Slater is dazed and starts talking about Holy Foley. Thinking Brian is Mick Foley, he then uh, thinks uh, Shane is Stephanie McMahon, calling him beautiful. Shane takes the contract and, 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 they, and they leave. He's like in a daze, like he's trying to sign a contract. He never does sign a contract. Shane gave him a pen, but he never did sign a contract. Well, he wakes wakes up and say, does it does that little thing? Where's my contract? Where's my contract? Where's my contract? Ends the segment. Back from the break, Eric Rowan will waste in the ring with Bray Wyatt. WWE Champion Dean Ambrose is out next. The bell rings and Ambrose goes wild, but Rowan floors him. Rowan keeps control with Ambrose. Drop uh, kicking him, sending him, sending him to the floor. Ambrose follows, but a Rowan took back control, brings him back in for a spinning power slam. As Wyatt looks on from, from his rocking chair, Ambrose goes to the floor for a breather, and Rowan send, sends him back into the barrier. Rowan keeps control and brings it back in for a two count. Rowan dominates until he runs into a big boot. Ambrose sends him out, but he comes right back in and misses a big boot in the corner. Ambrose finally makes a comeback and uh, slams Rowan. Ambrose with a big elbow for, drop for a two count. Rowan's eventually hits the spin kick for a two count. Rowan mounts uh, Ambrose with the right hand. More back and forth as Ambrose with big slingshot clothesline. Ambrose ends up, ends up hitting dirty deeds for the win. After the match, Ambrose stood tall with the title as Wyatt looks on. Still in the rocking chair, Ambrose leaves as and Wyatt just stares at, at a sheep mask in his hand. He drops it in a chair and walks off with his back to Rowan. Morrow speculates that this could be the end of Rowan and Wyatt. Wyatt family still to come second. Cena versus Del Rio. Also women's division tag, match, tag team action. by the commercial. Carmella and Becky Lynch versus Alexa Bliss and Natalya. Back from the break. Natalya waits with Alexa Bliss. While Carmella makes her way out. Becky Lynch was out next. Natalya and Carmella started things off. Back and forth action. Carmella got the upper hand and taught it to Natalya. Natalya caught her with a big clothesline and turned it around. Bliss comes in and keeps Carmella grounded. Becky finally gets the hot tag and unloads on both opponents. She goes at it with Natalya and then gets fired up. She goes on until Eva Marie's entrance starts up and interrupts. Eva makes her way out to the stage as the voiceover gives her the grand introduction again. And this is interrupted by a Naomi. Naomi chases Eva around the ring and gets back and back in. Eva runs right right out while Natalia grabbed Naomi, seeing her out of the way. She come, uh, she came in. Becky attacked, but Natalia rolled her up. This leads to Becky making Natalia tap to the disarmor. After the match, Naomi joined Becky and Carmella in the ring for a celebration. Still to come, 
I look at Lesnar versus Orton back to commercial. We come back and Baron Corbin is holding Callista's face to a wall backstage. Hmm. For a repeat of a couple weeks ago. Corbin threatens to continue beating on Callista. Officials try to get him off. Corbin says he does what he wants to who he wants. He jacks Callista up again and walks off. Announces hyping Summer Sam week before setting up to a video on Lesnar vs. Orton. <coughs> Which leads to John Cena vs. Alberto Del Rio match. Back from the break, and Styles has joined the announcers. <coughs> AJ Styles. Uh, Alberto Del Rio was out next. John Cena makes his way out. Uh, last to a big pop. They lock up and ca cautiously go at it to start. Fans do a chance for Cena. Cena sucks. Let's go, Cena. Uh, Cena ducks a cleat frog and nails a hip toss. Del Rio goes to, to the floor for a breather, and Cena gets riled up as we go back to commercial. Well, as my mom was watching the event, I snoozed during the rest of it and woke up after it was over. <coughs> okay, well, Cena ducked the leapfrog and uh, nailed the hip toss. Now we was for a four for a breather. Cena got wild up as we got a commercial. Back for the break, Del Rio is in control of Cena, but pulls the rope, and Del Rio is up on the floor. Cena brings it back in and goes for the attitude adjustment, but Del Rio hits a German suplex for a two count. Del Rio is back in control with Cena making a comeback. Del Rio turns it back around in the corner and goes for another pin attempt. More dueling chance for Cena. Del Rio launches Cena into the corner and hits another kick for a two count. Del Rio with a big DDT in the middle of the ring for a two count. Del Rio hit the corner. Uh, hits the corner to taunt Cena fans as they boo him. Back to commercial break. And Cena down in the middle of the ring. Back from the break and Cena is making another comeback. Del Rio eventually cuts him off with a backstabber. But that's not enough. Cena catches the super kick. And tries to get a hole, a hole locked in. Del Rio counters with a tilt to roll backbreaker. Del Rio misses the corner and Seguri. Cena with a big clothesline that gets an instant replay. Cena goes up top. But Del Rio hits an insecure for a close two count. Cena counters a car cross on breaker with an STF, but Del Rio makes it to the rope, bottom rope. Del Rio, Del Rio with a kick to the midsection and then one to the face. Del Rio with another close two count. Del Rio slides out over that attitude adjustment and applies cross iron breaker in the middle of the ring. Cena powers up and nails a power bomb. Cena nails the out attitude adjustment covers for the win. After Bell, Cena stands tall and celebrates. AJ springboards in with a phenomenal forearm and drops Cena as fans boo. Standing, standing over Cena, Styles make, uh, takes a mic and says he's tired of hearing about how the future goes through John Cena. Styles says he will be the new face that runs this place when he beats Cena at SummerSlam on Sunday. Uh, most fans boo AJ. AJ says Cena's love for WWE is great because it's going to make his passion his prison. AJ says, seeing his time is up and his time is now. AJ drops the mic and goes to leave, but comes back and grab, grabs Cena. AJ calls for a Styles Clash, but Cena turns it into an attitude adjustment. Cena stands tall as his music hits. Cena goes to ringside and takes apart the announce table. Cena slams AJ's head into the ring steps. Cena walks up, up the steps with AJ and drops him through the announce table with an attitude adjustment. Cena's music starts and backs back. back Starts back up, and he returns to the ring to celebrate as we go to replay. SmackDown goes off the air with Cena making his exit and AJ down the ringside. I did see some of that because I've uh, seen the uh, YouTube videos uh, for what uh, just happened there. Dark Saber after uh, after SmackDown taping, saw Dolph Ziggler as Coral Sanders take down Intercontinental Champion of Miz, dressed as a chicken. Apparently, this was some sort of uh, segment for WWE sponsor KFC. Show you a picture for that. Dark match main event. After SmackDown, saw so Raw Superstars, Roman Reigns, and Seth Rollins go at it. Correspondent uh, Rick Brueger noted that the crowd seemed split 50 50 for Reigns, but Rollins got strong reactions as well. Reigns ended up winning the match after hitting a spear and a Superman punch. Non title match. Uh, whatever. And a photo uh, uh, for Miz and Ziggler. Ending that segment for you. 
And that's going to conclude my video for SmackDown this week and your main event. Take that peace out. See you want to be it. Want to be you. If you don't know, just comment, brothers and sisters.